Aim D soon. Get fricked, Adobe. And uh, get fricked your VRAM. You can't have it. <laughs> Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find out on the internet. Well, we have this guy, Reese. And you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, January 14th, 2026. We're going to start off today with the reports that the AI 400 laptops are going to be launching on the 22nd. Yay. That is a few days before the Panther Lake laptops mm -hmm. are supposed to hit the market. You can currently pre-order some Panther Lake laptops. You can also order AI 400 laptops because they're just AI 300 laptops. So just you can buy the ones that are already on the market, tee hee hee hee, in case that's what you want to do. But also, 9850X3D allegedly will have its review embargo up on the 28th of Jan, with a potential rollout on the 29th. So AMD having some big rollouts this month. Cool. Speaking of rolling, you should do that with today's video sponsor. The only thing worse than a nine to five hunched over your little laptop all day is doing all that in a no good office chair. While your current budget chair might look like it has lumbar support with that tiny little flap of plastic back there, trust me, it doesn't. Today's sponsor, ProtoArc, knows all about making an affordable chair that actually supports you. The EC200 was designed with long sitting sessions in mind, offering great support at a price that you'll like. Instead of a little flap of plastic, the ProtoArc EC200 offers 2D adjustable lumbar support so you can change the height and depth to suit your specific needs. You also get a 3D adjustable headrest so you can keep your neck and noodle supported and find your perfect height, tilt, and rotation, then just kick back or actually lock in. This is an office chair after all, you should be working. If you're like me and got some long legs, you'll appreciate the adjustable seat depth. Keeping those thighs supported really goes a long way in making a long sitting session feel like nothing at all. Offering further support to your thighs and the tuchus is some nice high density molded foam in the cushion. The EC200 also accommodates people from five foot four all the way up to six foot three. So it fits both Kyler and Henry here just fine. Now, maybe on top of the nine to fiver, you're also a five to nine. -er. After you close the work laptop and boot up the gaming PC, the extra hours sitting down are going to feel so much better in a chair that's actually supporting you. Ditch the stiff and rigid chair you're currently in and leave the shrimp pose in the past. For under $200, you can experience what a real ergonomic office chair feels like when you grab a ProtoArc EC200 for yourself. The link is in the description below. Huge thanks to ProtoArc for sponsoring. Well, while ProtoArc's trying to reduce your constraints when it comes to sitting, Valve's trying to reduce the constraints when it comes to getting your game verified for the Steam machine with one of the key members of the whole Steam hardware program saying that they will have fewer constraints and if your game's already Steam Deck verified, it'll be verified for the Steam machine. Makes They're trying sense. to make it easy. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. That's the news. <laughs> What's also the news, and this is not tech, but I just wanted to talk about it. The Witcher Online launched. This is a mod project from some developers who made it so that you can play The Witcher 3 online multiplayer. I love that. It says if Kaer Morin didn't get spoilers. <laughs> it's kind of complicated how it works. Your locations are synced and you play the game together. You're not playing an MMO or like anything else. You're playing the game with friends, but not everything syncs properly. So it might be a little tricky when it comes to how you progress the story, but you can go check it out. Uh, we have the link in the video description in case you're interested in it. It has a whole bunch of mods that you have to install to make it work, but you can make it work. It's very cool. I've done something similar with Oblivion, but like you could see each other, but nothing else was synced. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, you know what else isn't syncing? The metaverse. The Witcher 3 metaverse is there, but the metaverse metaverse mm -hmm. is dying with Meta laying off a whole bunch of people and closing three VR studios. Oof. <laughs> this is happening as they're uh, basically giving up after they've lost tens of billions of dollars on the Reality Labs project, and they're essentially going to be switching to their Ray-Ban glasses and then AI hardware. That's... <laughs> That's what Meta is going to do because the whole rebranding was smart from the beginning. Everybody knew that when when everybody heard Zuck say, we're not Facebook anymore, we're Meta. Everybody clapped, applauded. Okay. That kid, his name was Albert Einstein. Well, Reese, uh, can you try to save us somewhere near $70 billion? I'll try my best. All right, he's going to try Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. And here's your first deal. Starting us off, we have a Logitech Brio 101 1080p webcam, going for only $24.99, making it $15 off. But then next up, we have the Corsair CXM series with the CX750M, the 750 watt 80 plus bronze semi modular power supply. It's going for only $59.99, making it $40 off. And then lastly, we have the Bay Dynamic DT990 Pro open back studio headphones, available in the limited edition black colorway for only $154.99, with included promo code. 
code making it $125 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to us for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, this is actually a pretty good deal if you compare it to what's actually already out on the market, and that is Apple launching their Creator Studio subscription that's gonna be launching on the 28th. This essentially rolls. You interrupted me. I'm sorry. My train of thought. <laughs> so the Creator Studio essentially rolls all of their professional applications into one big package. Mm -hmm. So that's things like Final Cut and Logic Pro and Pixelmator Pro and Motion and Compressor and Main Stage and Numbers and the other things. So there's a whole bunch that they're adding to it and it's gonna be $13 a month. That's not bad. I pay 70 for Adobe Creative Cloud. Yeah, no, I'm actually surprised at the price. It hurts. Well, you wanna be more surprised if you're a student or an educator, it's $3 a month. So $130 a year if you wanna pay yearly, $30 a year if you wanna pay yearly on the educator section. But also they're still allowing you to purchase it outright one time, which is vastly different from what <laughs> Adobe does. So currently Final Cut is $300, Logic mm -hmm. Pro is $200, Pixel Mate is 50 bucks. This, These are all staying the same price, but you can still have the option of purchasing them all outright, or you can go with the subscription package. So it's either or scenario. And I don't know if everything's on par with where Adobe is in some, terms of- Some of it. Yeah, you, you've tried to give up Photoshop many I times have, and it just doesn't it doesn't ever work. Procreate Pixelmator just never kind of scratches. Pixelmator it. came the closest, but it still wasn't quite there. Yeah, but I think for $13 a month is going to get a lot of people to start adopting more of what Agreed. Apple has versus what Adobe has because their subscription prices are whack dolls. I um, hate it. Yeah. DaVinci Resolve, also a good alternative option. It's free if you want to just use the base version. Mm -hmm. The Studio Edition is $300, unless you buy like their speed editing thing, which costs $300, but then gives you a studio license. So you could do that. Also, with this announcement, Apple's rolling out a bajillion AI features. So it's AI editing, AI music, AI uh, numbers, number AI keynote, AI e AI go big. AI big, big AI. And that's not the only AI news when it comes to Apple. <laughs> I'm saying things great. We're also going to reports that their server chips are going to be in production sometime later this year with self-developed AI server chips being reported for the second half. And it could help them build out their infrastructure when it comes to rolling through Gemini's software on their own hardware. Because currently, as far as we're aware, they're just running it on like regular Apple Silicon, but in a cloud environment. But turns out that they might struggle to make their own chips this year because a new shortage. Of course. It's popping up. Of course. So this is going to probably affect more than just Apple, but it's being reported as one of their key issues currently, and that is one of the main things that they use to make PCBs, that is glass cloth, is kind of shorted out because there's only one major manufacturer that makes it in the highest quality that they need it for Apple Silicon and for all the other chips that are being made and Apple's having a hard time getting their hands on it, which could potentially mean shortages or price hikes for Apple devices later and potentially more price hikes on anything that uses a PCB, which is everything. <laughs> and that's also one of the reasons why it's being reported. The 50 Super Series is delayed, indefinitely delayed. This is not necessarily novel news, but the, it's a new report coming out from NVIDIA's discussion with board partners on board channels with them essentially saying that overseas demand for GPUs is way too high. So they're going to focus on that AI, AIA, AIO, then VRAM uh, constraints is there. And then also there's no refresh. It's not necessary because the 50 series is competitive because AMD's got nothing good. It's not, AMD's, not pressured. AMD's not putting up enough numbers for people to want to do it. And speaking of all of those shortages, they're not getting a super refresh, which was going to increase the VRAM. We're also getting less 16 gigabyte GPUs with it being reported that the 5060 Ti 16 gig and the 5070 Ti are going to be constricted in favor of the eight gigabyte models because they're going to be putting their VRAM to better use with higher profit margins and you are not one of those high profit margins. You want to buy a $250 GPU? They have people willing to pay hundreds of thousands. Silly. Why would they Why would they think about you at all? So that's the idea. 8 gigabytes is going to have to suit you for quite some time. There's, you know, the reports that game developers are trying to prioritize mm -hmm. lower VRAM amounts because they're struggling to get the hardware too. We'll see if that plays out pans out bad, 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 not good, just rough situation altogether. But eight gigabytes is great. Unless you're trying to play Indiana Jones and th th the thing with the range, mm, it doesn't let you do doesn't that. Doesn't like it. And that was actually one of the funniest things from Intel's Panther Lake uh, slides was they showed it compared to a 4050 laptop and they put Indiana Jones on there. On the 4050, it was like, 
8 FPS, whereas on Parathor Lake, because they had enough VRAM, they ran fine. So, uh, who would have thought? Who, who would have thunk it? And then we got comments from yesterday where you guys thunk and put them into tippy taps. So let's see what you have to say. Fuzzy D saying, to put RAM prices in perspective, when a memory fab resin factory burnt down in 1992, RAM went from $20 per megabyte <laughs> to $95 per megabyte overnight. It took two years for prices to come down. We don't pay that much. We pay significantly less. We're paying about 10 to $15 per gigabyte. This is also not adjusted for inflation is uh, mentioned in the reply. Adjusting for inflation would make this significant significantly worse. Progress has happened. It's just still not as good as where it was a few months ago when I mean, it was really great. Then we got Alucard saying Gamers Nexus is the origin of they're trying to kill the PC market as far as I know. Might be wrong, but that's where I heard it first. Makes a lot of sense. I'm trying to think about how to word this because I don't want to denigrate anything that uh, Steve and Gamers Nexus are doing when it comes to their reporting. But what I notice is whenever they put forth an idea that like has a lot of nuance and like detailed research, people then take the basest form of that and just spout it. It, it reminds me a lot of like political commentary and like people watching all of the news channels. I'm not going to mention, you know, whichever side of the aisle you're on. Essentially, they are doing this. You, you base level attack and then it just it creates this like us versus them scenario. Every time I've watched Gamers Nexus, that's not what they're necessarily saying because they have a lot of information density and like nuance. But then people then take the like TLDW and don't actually have any nuance to it. And that's what I'm finding in the comments. That's how I know that a, a YouTuber spouted it because the hive mind becomes lacking nuance everywhere. There's a lot of information going out here and then condensing it down into small little comment form a lot of the nuance gets lost. I don't know that it gets lost. I don't think it's there for a lot of them. For a lot of them. I mean, you know, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. Nuance is a good thing. And uh, not everything as is as cut and dry as people like to make it seem. And things are actually not as nefarious as people like to make it seem as well. Never attribute to malice what can be attributed to incompetence. There's just stupid decisions being made all the time, not necessarily evil ones. And, you know, sometimes you could argue that they're the same thing, but that's... Hold on, <laughs> nuance. I like nuance. Too, I, I, like to, I like to have, you know, it's hard to have nuance, especially when people want to just reduce everything to its basis level form because that gives you the quickest way to have an online argument. Mm -hmm. You're an idiot. Thank you. <laughs> then we got Nacho Muncher saying, Brett has been turning more and more into pure gremlin energy with each resegment. You know why? Why? I'm jet lagged to heck and back. I got no sleep. I've been up since 1 a.m., sir. Oh, that's when I went to bed. <laughs> and then yesterday I was up at 2.30 and so I ain't sleeping. Friggin' 10 hour time difference with Vegas. Ugh. That'll mess anyone up. And then narcotic narcissism saying dogs have elbows. What are elbows but uh, uh, arm knees? Mm -hmm. Arm, not armies, arm knees, uh, but they're legs, right? So they're not elbows. So they're... They're backwards knees. Gotcha. A lot of people pointing out, they think I was talking about like the dog's ankle. That's not what I was talking about. None. I was not talking. I was talking about the backwards knees they got. Then we got Moken saying, really hope Valve considers selling the Steam Machine, Steam Deck, Steam Frame, and the Steam Controller officially here in South Africa. Highly doubt it, but it would be nice. I don't want to see incredible corruption importing and charging 35K Rand for a Steam Machine. And then somebody saying, you can make a deal with them and be the official representative of Steam in South Africa. It's not that easy. You can't just <laughs> imagine. They, you can't just do that. Like companies have tried. I don't see it happening. Even for them to get distribution in Asia it took a lot. Like they are not trying to expand regions. And unfortunately, that just means my Steam machine purchase is going to include a plane ticket. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. It's going to be affordable. And then we got Nicola saying, when I heard you say incredible connection, it hurt me. You didn't hear me say that. I actually didn't say it. I said incredible corruption. Mm -hmm. All right. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably purchased stuff from there, but I can't think of anything. I go in there in the mall sometimes because they're it's tech and it's there, but like I got my Legion go there. It was cheaper at the time than anywhere else. Yeah, well, you know, it's fine. All right. And we got Blade Crew saying, where's Catlin? I need my UDF deals with her and Reese. I miss her wave and thumbs up. This duo is so great with Brett at Chaos in a room. The three Chaos tier. She's the one who threw something at Reese. That wasn't yeah. me. Catlin's there lurking from the shadows and assaulting us. It's fun. You never know. And we got Master Nico saying, don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. I haven't seen the movie. 
I just want to want to put that out there. It seemed funny, but I did not. I don't get it. Do you get it? Have you seen it? Is it funny? Let me. OK, good job. You made Reese chuckle. And we got Eggplant Watch saying, I'm not sure who they are, but I could totally see a big marketing push for cloud based windows coming soon with all the RAM GPUs and upcoming PSUs and SSDs being all blah, 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 not to denigrate your uh, your message. I'm just really tired. So my brain uh, fuzzed out there. But this comment caught me in particular because I did a senior high school report on the idea that the next Windows would be cloud-based. Really? Yeah, we must have been on Windows Vista and uh, 7 was on its way and the reports that were coming out at the time was that everything was going to be cloud-based. I feel like I remember some of these headlines like and so people that's... in South Africa freaking out because we didn't have good stable internet. So that was like two decades ago. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, I graduated high school a, a hot minute ago and it doesn't pan out, right? Like this idea that they're trying to push us to cloud gaming and getting rid of the personal computer, I think it's too reductive. I think I think it's an option. And I think people are ascribing malice to this like AI shortage when in reality, it's not quite that cut and dry. It is a profit uh, driven decision, mm -hmm. but at the same time, if they can make profit by selling personal computers, they will also do that. Cloud-based things aren't necessarily going to be the best option. The reason Adobe went with subscriptions is not because they didn't want to sell their products at the prices that they were selling them out, like buying it one time off. It's that nobody bought them and people were pirating the crap out of them. So the way they had to stay alive as a business was to turn it into a subscription model so that they could verify the install so that they didn't go under. That's the reason they did it. And obviously it's gotten a little more expensive over the years. A little, yeah. But at the same time, the reason they're doing that is because people are willing to pay for it. And uh, you know, the options of what you can purchase on the market aren't necessarily as competent. And as soon as they are, people switch over to them. The yeah. amount of people switching over to DaVinci Resolve, quite high. The amount of people that are likely going to switch over to Final Cut now because of a much more affordable subscription is likely to happen. But it's not like Final Cut didn't exist. It was just $300 and yeah. people didn't want to necessarily spend that. So it's not that you're not supposed to own it. It's that when you're given the option of owning it, you don't buy it. It's kind of the consumer's decision at that point. The reason they're doing cloud is because that's what people pay for. It's not as cut and dry as they. It's the whole machine. It's everybody participating in this ecosystem. It's me who gives Adobe money for creative cloud so that we can edit our videos and has been talking about switching to DaVinci Resolve for quite some time. <laughs> A couple years at this point. It, yeah. Because uh, the capital investment of human labor to switch over to something else is also a consideration that has to be taken into account with the opportunity costs that come from uh, downtime with editing speed and like learning all of that. It's all, you know, it's there's multiple considerations. That's the reason I give Adobe a subscription is because it costs something to switch. I want to put something forward based on my experience with Photoshop. When you had to pay yearly for Photoshop, like, well, not yearly, you pay for a new version of Photoshop to get new features that they added. It was a big price drop every time that you, you know, you're throwing into a new application. I kind of like the subscription model because I get new features at a regular development cycle every two to three months. There's something new and something big that they add that has made my life easier. I don't like paying a constant subscription, but I have seen the benefit of more frequent updates to the application itself. Yeah, and uh, the truth is when it's $20 a month, it's way easier to spend that $240 over the course of the year instead of dropping three to $600 when the new version comes yeah. out every single time. Economic considerations as well. It's not, it's all, not all nefarious, but nuance is stupid. You're an idiot. I'm an idiot. They. Did you say they? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't put this comment up there, but uh, somebody said boohoo smoking. Suck it up because the Vegas comments smelly. It was on Reddit uh, recently where somebody was like, for non smokers, can you actually tell when somebody's recently smoked? It's like, yeah, yes. Like if you smoke, you you your sense of smell gets blinded and you don't realize how potent it is to literally everybody else around you. It is rough. Yeah, I'm going to complain about it. It hurts to breathe in cigarette smoke that other people are doing. I don't like it. I don't like sharing air with you either. <laughs>